This week, the government admitted that there is an, outgo an ongoing crisis of drug stockouts in the country. Now, according to the Prime Minister, Robina Nabanja, the government is now working around the clock to resolve this dilemma. However, there have been questions about what is causing the negative trend. One of the institutions asking the questions is the Center for Health, Human Rights and Development, whose executive director I'm privileged to be hosting this afternoon, Ms. Fatia Chiangi, joining me. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into the deep of the matter. What factors are contributing to the country's current crisis as far as medical supplies is concerned? I think drugs stock out in, stock out in Uganda are not a new problem, except we are at the worst uh, this time because it's, uh, it's countrywide. It's a national problem. Uh, previously, facilities have suffered and struggled. But I think we are at our worst. Some of the causes is the, uh, the stagnant budget allocation for medicines um, and health supplies. We are stagnated at about 500 billion mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, and not taking into consideration the changes, I mean the fuel, the fuel, the, the, the increase in fuel prices that are causing uh, transportation and distribution to be more expensive but also inadequate budget allocation for health services is critical. We also have a weak supply, uh, supply mechanism, uh, supply chain mechanism, weak in terms of forecasting, uh, weak in terms of uh, planning. Ideally, why didn't we plan ahead of time? Uh, also looking at uh, 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 planning, forecasting, but also distribution because we have heard uh, from the report of the minister that the money for distributing the medications has not been given to NMS. So mm -hmm. our, we, our supply chain mechanism is still quite weak. So we quite have systems issues in our country and okay. systems issues are not new. So, uh, and they take time to be addressed. So I think we haven't been so proactive in terms of addressing this system Miss Chiangi, in the presence of the things that you have mentioned, the bigger question now becomes, how long is this going to continue on? Well, because as I said, it's a system issue. It needs to be planned well. Uh, as you could, you, could all, you, you could tell from the statement of the minister, the ministry is putting it on Minister of Finance. You see? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it, it could take longer the earlier the government ministry seat to address the problem. And addressing the problem means that they have to be balanced. Uh, we've seen uh, the minister saying uh, the new mechanism, the integrated financial uh, system for Ministry of Finance is rigid. Mm -hmm. We have seen uh, delays in disbursing funds to the NMS. Uh, but also we see from Ministry of Finance a challenge of putting all these systems to control corruption. I think the mi government ministries need to come together and strike a balance, the mechanisms for ensuring that there is access, timely access to essential medicines and health supplies needs to be balanced. We need to make sure it's flexible enough to allow for seamless continuous supply, but as well ensure that we control we control corruption. So you see a situation where on one hand we are so preoccupied with controlling corruption and this is the problem we are getting now, okay. that we, we have frozen distribution. On the other hand, you cannot say that you will not control the corruption. So I think we really need to get the government ministries to balance those two. Well, that's a deep hole that you have painted for us. Now let's talk about the impact of this drug stockout crisis, one on patients and on health workers, as well as the entire health system. Okay, uh, clearly uh, drug stockout in the country is a human rights issue, uh, and a human rights issue that is rooted within our own constitution. Uh, and uh, states, uh, our state has the obligation to respect, to protect and fulfill human rights. And uh, in terms of our uh, uh, article, in our objectives and principles of the Constitution, this it is rightly stated that the state will, uh, will, uh, will take all measures to ensure the provision of m basic medical services to the population. Are we taking all possible measures as a state right now? Uh, when it comes to the respect of uh, human rights, 
we must ensure, the state must ensure that there is no interference in the enjoyment of the right to health. Currently, there is interference in access to, to medicines by, by patients and, and families. When it comes to fulfilling the right to health, we can still see that uh, states has the obligation to ensure that administrative procedures and mechanisms and systems and budget allocation and policies are all in place to ensure that there is timely access. We see the opposite right now. So this current crisis has a very huge human rights bearing okay. and somebody has got to be accountable. And in the whole puzzle, how many patients, how many people have we lost as a country because the problem is has not started today. Speaking of patients, uh, this week we've been running stories of patients that are actually suffering from this current crisis. Now let's talk about the sustainability because they must get drugs. If they don't get drugs, there's fear that they're going to lose their lives. Some cannot even afford to get these drugs on themselves. They are not financially able to do that. So what are the possible lasting po uh, solutions to this crisis? I think the lasting solution is to really fix the problem, the systems issues that we have talked about. But it is extremely important for patients in Uganda to be empowered on their rights. The challenge is that patients do not know their rights. We'll, by now, we would be seeing an uprise from patients. Is that demanding. something that you cover with Centre? Oh, health? yes. At, at the Centre for Health, Human Rights and Development, we actually empower communities on their rights for them to hold the duty bearers accountable, for them to, to know that this is your rights and you can go and ask. And also we empower the, the duty bearers like healthcare workers to know their obligations. So I think uh, th in the, 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 the solution is also to get the communities to be responsive, to demand, but as well to empower the duty bearers to be able to respond. On the impact on healthcare workers, you see healthcare workers have a legal, a legal obligation of the duty to care. Okay. But that is uh, in, in an environment that that facilitates that well when uh, the this conversation is is a long one and i hope that we can maybe interact with you more on this conversation next week regarding the crisis but as you've heard from miss fatia in regards to the situation presently if the government can actually enable and partner with different stakeholders like Center for Health to one, create awareness of the patient's rights, very important for the patients to know their rights in ensuring that they have and enjoy the right to health. That brings us to the end of NTV at one. I am Priscilla Regina Nalorga. Thank you so much for watching.